Hello, and welcome to an episode of CBR Plays. Um, trying something different, just just going back to the basics, you know, just uh, playing some gameplay videos so that you can uh, see some spicy stuff that I've been up to when I'm uh, not streaming Lazy Sunday Legacy. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, CBRMTG is a, a community-run group of content creators and magic players alike, trying to bring you the best Australian content to your very eyes and ears. Uh, today, we are playing Urza's Scales Affinity. <laughs> so, something, uh, this this is something that I th thought of immediately, and I wrote an article about it, and I'll link it in the description below, but um, there was a something missing from the modern scene, and it was the other infinite combo that Urza brings to you. So, as everyone knows, and it's kind of ripping up uh, modern at the moment, is uh, Urza Lord High Artificer is a combo with Thopter Foundry and Sword of the Meek, where you just make infinite mana, infinite tapped creatures, uh, and you can win that way. Uh, something that no one has really sort of mentioned yet is that um, it kind of also goes infinite in a hardened scale shell. So. We're going to try that today, and if uh, I'll go through the combo now, so if anyone doesn't know, and then we'll get jump right in, jump right into the deck deck. It revolves around animation modules. So animation module, kind of a mainstay now of the hardened scales deck. Whenever a plus one plus one counter is put onto a permanent you control, you may pay one. If you do, make a colorless servo artifact creature token, uh, and then it has three and tap. Choose a counter on target permanent player, and then give another one of it. So this is like a really aggressively cheap artifact. Uh, fits perfectly into the Hardened Scales deck because you just kind of accumulate value and the way that Hardened Scales can get a, uh, ahead is they, um, you know, they tap out every turn because they always have something to do. So whether it's um, animating, uh, using animation module or uh, pumping a blister or pumping a hangerback walker, uh, it all kind of uh, comes together quite easily. So the thing is with animation module is because it says pay one, you can uh, use... Urza Lord High Artificer to uh, pay for that cost by tapping the server that it makes and then you start the loop again. Uh, the two ways that you can do this is using Arcbound Ravager where you um, where you can sacrifice an artifact to put a plus one plus one counter on Arcbound Ravager. So what happens with that is that animation module triggers off Arcbound Ravager, says would you like to make a servo, you pay one, you tap that for one with Urza. Uh, and then sacrifice it to Arcbound Ravager, and that ends up being a infinitely large Arcbound Ravager. Uh, now that can run havoc for your opponent because uh, it um, it can kind of get out of control, even just as a you know a million a million is fine, uh, which you can attack with. But you can also move the counters around with Arcbound Ravager's modular ability, so um, the counter can move onto a Walking Blister or a Hangerback Walker or an Incomoth Nexus, and then just kill your opponent just by uh, attacking with one creature or pinging your opponent to death with Walking Ballista. Uh, the combo also works with Metallic Mimic. Now Metallic Mimic says when it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type, and it's the chosen type in addition to its other types. And each other creature you control with the chosen type enters the battlefield with plus one plus one counter on it. So that also means that if you put it onto the battlefield as a servo, uh, every time you make a servo, put a pl plus one plus one counter on the servo, and then you can tap the servo and make another one. So it ends up being infinite tutus. Uh, they're all tapped and you have to untap and uh, attack to win, but still a very, very, very fine uh, thing to do with your, uh, with your mana. Now, that's the reason that we're only playing two in the deck, so... To start us off on our deck tech, uh, we have Urza, Lord High Artificer, as we mentioned before. When it, if you haven't seen this card before, when it enters the battlefield, you make a 0-0 zero, zero colorless contract artifact creature token with this creature gets plus one plus one for each artifact you control, so basically a construct. Uh, you can tap any un untapped artifact you control to add blue mana, and then you can pay five, shuffle your library, then exile the top card. Until the end of turn, you may play that card without paying its mana cost. So... Um, that's sort of the engine behind the combo that has recently come out, and uh, yeah, it should be a lot of fun. So, because of this, we have to splash blue for it, because we want to cast it on turn 4 or turn 3, if we can, with uh, with blue mana. So, instead of the traditional uh, 6 forest mana base, uh, and we've got some other forest utility lands that you can play, like uh, Lanawa Reborn or Pendlehaven, but we're just replacing that with all green-blue lands. So we have two Waterlogged Grove for card draw, two Yavamaya Coasts, 
and four botanical sanctum as our blue sources so uh if you've played with this deck before you'll find that after the third land drop it doesn't really matter whether or not your cards come in tapped or untapped so it's not hugely relevant that a botanical sanctum on turn four will come in tapped uh and otherwise it's just a really good dual land uh and of course with the avamaya coast just a nice budget alternative uh, but also, you're very rarely using the colored ability because there's so few colorless, uh, colored sources in the deck. So it won't deal you more damage than, say, a breeding pool uh, in, a, in, in an average game. Because going on to our one drops, we have four Ancient Stirrings and four Hardened Scales, which is, of course, green mana. But we'll be able to pay for it pretty easily with the mana base that we're supporting right now. Other lands is four Ink Moth Nexus uh, for Infect Kills. Uh, four Darksteel Citadel for an extra artifact for your Mox Opal, and one Blink Moth Nexus if things go awry. Uh, we have two Welding Jars to protect our cards, and four Mox Opals as standard. Uh, we have four Arcbound Workers and three Animation Modules. Um, now for the people who are Hardened Scales of, uh, aficionados, You'll notice that we don't have the Steel Overseer, um, we're replacing it with Metallic Mimic, something that a couple of people have been doing, especially um, uh, Varro in the recent Mythic Championships was running a couple of uh, Metallic Mimics in his list as well, so it's definitely a fine choice by itself, uh, but replacing the Steel Overseer gives you a couple of uh, explosive starts as well, where you can play turn 2 Metallic Mimic, and then play a Hanger Back for 0 or a Walking Ballista for 0, and they'll come in with a plus 1 plus 1 count on it, so kind of free value like that. Um, we have four Arcbound Ravagers as standard, as mentioned, the two Urza Lord High Artificers, and then, yeah, four Hangerback Walkers, four Walking Ballistas. We're trying to stay as close as we can to the original Hardened Scales, but the only sort of changes that we're making is adding Urza, adding Metallic Mimics, and adding an extra animation module. No Throne of Geths in here, uh, couldn't make them fit, basically replace them with Urza. Uh, and yeah, extra animation modules because we really want to try and go for that combo when we can. Going into sideboards... We have two Dismembers, four Nature's Claims, uh, three Tormoid's Crypt, two Pithing Needle, and three Damping Spheres, which are all pretty standard sideboard cards for uh, Hardened Scales. You just want to stop your opponent from playing things that will kill you, uh, and it has a pretty tough time against Tron, so the Damping Spheres are worth it, and then also the three Tormoid's Crypts for Graveyard Hate. Uh, and then three Nature's Claims for your Stony Silences, or your... Um, uh, or your ensnaring bridges, or those sorts of things. Um, and we also have two stubborn denials, because now we're in blue, we're feeling a little bit more adventurous, and we want to put in one of the best counter spells for these affinity style decks. Uh, almost certainly gonna have Ferocious turned on most of the time, or we can move stuff around to turn it into Ferocious. Uh, and this stops Colligan's Command, this stops a early, um, this stops an early, uh, Stony Silence if your opponent taps out for it. Uh, and it has a lot of utility, so I think we'll be raring to go with this one. So that is uh, Urza's Scales Affinity, and uh, let's get into the gameplay. Alright, we are back for round one. And look, I see a Hardened Scales in my opening hand, so I'm probably going to keep it, honestly. Uh, lead on Botanical Sanctum, and then kind of go from there. This feels really good. Uh, ooh. We're going, we're playing uh, Harbinger. This is very interesting. I've seen uh, people sort of talk about uh, their. Hmm. Mm, that's a shame. Probably could have played out the everything just then, but that's fine. We get more modular triggers off the Arcman Worker. Yeah, it seems that um, uh, Elementals is having us time in the sun, so Team Rare Elementals with. Uh, uh, Omnath and Risen Reef uh, looks pretty good, so we'll see how this this person goes. They're obviously pretty keen jumping into a league with it, so the classic turn two Risen Reef, as you know of. Flank and Harbinger. Well, I'm not I'm not particularly scared, <laughs> but you know, it could be. Anything could happen. So I'll just uh, yeah play out my stuff, I think. So play Arcban Ravager comes in with an extra counter. Uh, play Worker, comes in with an extra counter, and shift the turn. So we have a little protection if our opponent um, tries to do anything funny, but yeah, they're probably just going to outvalue us, uh, but with Arcbound Ravager and Harden Scales, things get really shifty really quickly, so we have a lot of really good top decks hoping Hoping to top deck that Urza, actually, because uh, we can easily cast it and not even take any damage off these Yavmai Ghosts. But we will need at some point to have, um... 
Oh, pine's going deep. Huh. All right, fair enough. Elemental spells and warrior spells you cost cost one less to cast. Opponent, live in the dream. Not the skeletal dream, but a dream nonetheless. Here comes Bright Half. You get a Risen Reef trigger. He gets a some nothing. Here comes Risen Reef. Not in ah oh, hidden hidden a land. Uh, not in too many lands, which is bad because it means they're just drawing cards. But yeah, it seems like a lot of fun. Risen Reef seems to be sort of giving you a reason to uh, play ele elementals, that's for sure. Alright, so opponent, no real good attacks now, so yeah, we need a payoff card, I think. Yeah, work is kind of a payoff card. Depends who you're talking to. So Darksteel Citadel, and yeah, we'll just play out the worker. Um... Now, if we attack with both, they're probably just chump block. Um, but we can get them pretty big, so I think we threaten an attack here. Um, and guarantee whatever they... If they don't chump, uh, we just blow them out with the cards that we have on the battlefield, which is obviously not a big deal, so they, they might chump here. Yeah, chump with the flamekin. It would be a good idea to see how much mana they think they have, because... Um, Smoke Breeder, I mean, Smoke Breeder and Blight Hearth is kind of a combo, but I probably wouldn't care about keeping it alive if I were them. We'll see what they go with, but we're definitely uh, wanting to pressure our opponent as much as possible before they overcome us with these elementals. They're playing Ziggurats and stuff, so they might still just be playing Teemer, but I don't think it's out of, out of the realms of possibility that they're playing... A bunch of different colors. We'll see. Yeah, putting them on the back foot here, forcing them to make some kind of chump block. Yeah, this is like... I don't really care about this. <laughs> yeah, opponent's just gonna chump. I think they're thinking whether or not we'll kill them here. So, let's see if we can. Uh, so, there are 19. So, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, 11, 12, 13, uh, 14. Yeah, so we can only dome them for 14 here, if I'm not mistaken. I'll just double check. Um, uh, yeah, so this goes to 4. Okay, we're just going to damage now. That's fine. Less than ideal. I would like to go to blocks, but I guess my blocks thing isn't there. Alright, fair enough, fair enough. Well, <laughs> I guess we have a modular trigger. Might as well put it on here. Yeah, that was that was not ideal. Gotta have those stop sets, you know. I almost always have all of the stop sets all the time because then you can work out that mass, but pretty sure. So, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, and then sacrifice it, put it all on our grand average of 14. Yeah, it wasn't dead, uh, they weren't dead there, but it was definitely not ideal to miss that um, and trade. Could have easily sacrificed a land there, so hopefully it doesn't cost us the game because our grand ravager certainly uh, threatens lethal every turn that it's on the battlefield, so we'll see. All right, creeping trailblazer for our opponent, the second one. Now they can start to go aggro. Yeah, Risen Reef drawing them a million cards. Yeah, drawing uh, two cards every time. Pretty good, pretty good. Alright, what's the follow-up? Thunderkin Awakener. Yeah, that's going to... <laughs> make our life a little bit more difficult. They're just kind of going off here, so they can... They still have one, two, three, four, five mana available to them. And I don't think anything costs less, but this Flamekin Harbinger will get them whatever they want to get back. And it's going to hurt. We'll see if we're dead here. Something good off the top can still help us. Alright. Thunder can awaken her. That's fine. Yeah, we're probably going to lose this, actually. Alright. Opponent... 
Can, so they can attack for a million here, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Uh, ooh. I think we just take it. My opponent's gonna, uh, 14, 15. Yeah, okay. So I don't think we're just dead. Oh, uh, no, we are just dead. So we have to block. That is very unfortunate. So these come in tapped and attacking, thanks to Flame and Harbinger. They draw a million more cards. This is, uh, this is impressive. I'm impressed. Tima Elementals, huh? Okay. Uh, so they get back their two creatures. Let's just do some quick maths here. Uh, so 12, uh, 15, 18. So, uh, yeah, kind of, yeah. We're, I think we're just dead. That Arcbrand Ravager line definitely threw us off because now, like, we'll get a, like, we'll get a two here. Um, but there's not much that we can pull off the top to win, unfortunately. So, go to two. Yeah. Alright, fair enough, fair enough. More cards. Of course. Omnath? Ooh, That's not very good for us. Alright, here comes Omnath, gonna snipe one of our creatures. Yep. <laughs> Nine elementals. Ten elementals. More Risen Reef Triggers. Oh my gosh. Alright, fair enough, fair enough. And they just ping our face here. So we're dead anyway. Um, but, yeah, I mean, impressive showing from Elementals. Uh, I guess we were dead no matter what we did. The opponent just kind of went off there. Um, pretty cool, pretty cool. Alright. Uh, going into sideboards now, I'm probably playing Dismember. Oh man, I had Torpor Orb in the board for a little while, and I feel kind of silly though, I don't have it anymore. I don't think Nature's Claim is worth it. It's honestly probably just Damping Sphere. Uh, sorry, Dismember. Maybe we actually bring in one Damping Sphere, only because, um... Probably could have Cyborg cards or whatever, but it's just like stopping them from going off, I think, is probably pretty important. Uh, yeah, Torpor Orb would be really good here. <laughs> Alright, go down the Relic. Um, I think we want to keep the Welding Jars for Bolts and such. Um... So, we'll go down uh, one of the stirrings. Just, I usually trim a stirring if I'm bringing in colored cards. Uh, and then we can go down... Uh, we'll go down a worker. Alright, we're on the play. See how that goes. Damping Sphere, a little bit dubious, but we'll see how we can go. Alright, we're on the play for game number two. And we've got a, another quick start. Uh, we'll keep. Enough lands. It's kind of a fair hand, but... Um, ooh, Lane Line of the Void? Why do players do this to us? This is, uh... Now probably a reason not to play Hardened Scales if you have the option to play multiple different decks because... Like, no one knew about the Leyline interaction for ages, it felt like, and we're kind of going under the radar, and I think that's why, uh... Uh, Varro did so well with the deck that he went... that he, um... Uh, is a deck that he went with because, uh... It was kind of... a... You know, kind of felt like a meta call. Like, people were... Uh, Hardened Scales was the biggest thing in the... Sorry, uh, Leyline of the Void was the most played card in... Uh, at the time. And it felt like it was kind of like... Why should it be... Uh, why should Hardened Scales do well? But, like, it kind of flew under the radar that Hardened Scales, like... Leyline of the Void isn't that good against Hardened Scales. Um, and Hogak was definitely what you should be scared of. But, I mean, now it's... Uh, it's kind of hosing us because we have this uh, hangerback walker that if it dies we don't get any triggers um, and our Arcban Ravager that if it dies we don't get any triggers so kind of hoses us here so hopefully they kept a bad hand to justify what they're doing here um, I think we're gonna pass yeah let's let's pass and tick up hangerback walker I think, um, I'm gonna try and be as mana efficient as possible, I suppose, but, um, ticking up Hangerback Walker in response to a removal spell, you at least get, um, I guess you don't get anything, because <laughs> of the Leyla Void. Leyla Void, good card, good card. Alright, just a Rhythm Reef. Not, well, I mean, killed us last game, so we'll see if it does that again to us this game. Pretty slow start from our opponent, which is good, so... Yeah, we'll, we'll take up this sucker. 
make it impossibly huge. I think probably a 4-4 is where we want to be. Oh. Now I'm not sure. Alright, hardened scales. Uh, ink moth. Ink moth's not a very good clock right now, but it's something. So I think we're going to all out attack here. Uh, it's probably unlikely that our opponent will kill us, and... Huh. So, now do we sack everything? So, 1, 2, 3, so 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Yeah, it's just 17 at the moment, so we'll let him, let him take this amount. But uh, we'd have to sack our whole board to do so. Uh, but we definitely have them dead next turn if they don't win. So that's good. I mean, they have to have a removal spell, obviously, but we can just um, swing with two creatures, and if they don't block Darkman Ravager, then we just win. Flicker Wisp, that's not very good for us. Flicker Wisp, the elemental, huh? Oh, I guess we're playing all five colors now. All right, fair enough. So resets our Hangerback Walker. Uh, I guess we don't sack it to Darkman Ravager. Sad. Oh well. We'll do it in response to state-based actions, of course. Yeah. Definitely warming up to the stream, of course. Yeah. So end of the turn, it comes back and then just dies immediately. So blue mana, green mana. Okay. Well, run it back. I think we have lethal this turn if our opponent, um, if our opponent doesn't block the Arcban Ravager, but they probably do. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, so sacrifice this. Get a million counters. That's five five. Yep, fair enough. Cool. So two infect, obviously not ideal, and if the Leyline of the Void wasn't there, they'd just be dead. But I suppose they'd keep a faster hand if they didn't have a Leyline of the Void in their hand. Kind of the power of Leyline. Well, the drawback, I suppose, if you want to think about it that way. Thunderkin Awakener has haste. Oh, that is super bad for us. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, that's going to kill us. That's very unfortunate. Yep. Thunderkin gets back Flicker Wisp. It will come in with three counters, so it's not that big of a deal, but it is very annoying, that's for sure. Yep, no sack. And yeah, take the damage. So they still have to block with their Risen Reef if they're not going to play any more spells. I assume they are. Just a Flamekin Harbinger. And drawing two cards. <laughs> I guess drawing a card and then doing the thing. Yeah, alright. See what they put on top of their library. Probably something that will hurt us. See what it is. Gets another Flamekin Harbinger. Probably just... Yeah, I mean, you may as well go off like that. <laughs> it's a good way to go off. Alright, see what they get for the next one. Next Flamekin... Oops, stacked our triggers incorrectly. That's okay. Alright. Yep, so Flicker Wisp down. Not that it means that much. Metallic Mimic. Well, there's two parts of our combo. We're almost there. Um, can't play Urza, unfortunately. The mana base can still be a little bit tricky. Just That's why we had to run so many blue-green lands. Because of things like this, but that's okay. So I think easy mode is go in and attack. Uh, they almost certainly block here. I mean, they should, otherwise they're dead. Um, but at least, uh, at least we get to kill something. Yep. Unfortunately, conventional damage just doesn't quite do it here because of the Thunderkin Awakener. Um, I think we still play the Mimic. Uh, we're gonna name Servo on this one just to hope that we luck in to the animation module, but we don't really have anything else going for us. We name Construct and uh, get an extra counter on the Construct that Urza makes, but um, yeah, I think it's probably just not ideal. Ingot Chua? Oh, well that's not very helpful for us at all. Alright. Oh, we're getting absolutely railed by uh, the big um, the big elementals. Very interesting deck, I'll see. It would be cool to see if it um, 
sort of makes more of a splash. It would be nice to draw any of our sideboard cards, but look, here we are. Risen Reef truly a power to be reckoned with, especially when you're casting multiple elementals in a turn, of course. Yep. Nearly everything in. Brings back Harbinger. And Flicker Wisp. Yep. More Risen Reef triggers. Ugh. Well, timing out is our main win con here. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, uh, if they had the, um... Huh. Did they bounce? Our Ink Moth Nexus? That's not really an issue. Fair enough. I guess this is to stop us from blocking. Seems reasonable. Alright, fair enough. Well, that keeps our Arcbound Worker at 3, which I suppose is something. I guess that doesn't actually change anything. Alright, come back. We're playing big old Omnath. That's bad for us. Ugh. Alright, well, I think we're dead next turn, unfortunately. We get our, um... We get our Ink Moth Nexus back, but it'll just die to Flicker Wisp. Yeah, it's a good, good, uh, cool interaction, that's for sure. Alright, going for the Vespalark. Um... No real value. Sacrificing... Yep. That's pretty strong. Uh, Welding Jar is fine. Doesn't really do anything yet. <laughs> yeah, so... Attack! <laughs> I think... Um, like, I pretty much just snap blocking here, but like, they have... have lethal in a million ways. And they already have a Flamekin Harbinger in the bin, so it's like, not that big of a deal, I suppose. Yeah. Alright. Well, see if they can kill us, I guess. Ink Moth, uh, not doing a whole lot here. Probably gonna get run over. Yeah, I needed that Dismember or the, um, even the Damping Sphere would be okay. Even just Blue Mana would be fine. Yeah, big attack. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. Oof. Fair enough. Alright, well, that's that, I suppose. That was pretty impressive. Alright, we'll concede. Alright, we're back for match two of our Urza's Scales Affinity League. Been pretty fairly uh, crushed by the elementals in the previous stage, which was very impressive, so good showing from them. And we'll see what we're up against. Definitely Affinity. Alright, well. Our brethren, the affinity deck. Uh, we will lead on Yavimaya. Take a bit of damage. Ancient Staring, see what we wheel into. We need something big. Um, Talic Mimic is okay. Annoying to have Urza at the bottom, of course, but um, it is what it is. Play Welding Jar. Pass the turn. So, chances of getting another Urza are probably pretty low. Uh, we have one on the very bottom of our deck and one in a random place on our deck, so uh, we'll see. We'll see what our opponent comes up with. Yeah, it looks like a pretty standard affinity draw. Okay, pass back to us and the metallic mimic. I went. We're not dead next turn, right? Ugh. All right, play Inky. Uh, play metallic mimic. This one's gonna name S construct for sure. So, name, construct. Yeah, pretty fair hand from us, unfortunately. Kinda need that fast mana to fight with these affinity decks, but you do what you gotta do, you know. Yeah, opponents have them to think. Thinking about Galv blasting our metallic mimic. Probably keep it alive, honestly. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Save us four damage. Happy to do that. Alright, so metallic mimic removed from combat. Pass the turn. Now, we kind of need some fun. We need to do something unfair pretty quickly, I think, because our opponent's going to kill us pretty soon, that's for sure. Yep. Alright, fair enough. Pretty fair affinity. Ooh. ooh, ooh. Alright. Well, uh, play Metallic Mimic. <laughs> We're doing some real fair magic here, that's for sure. Uh, on Construct. Probably gonna lose, unfortunately, but we got the ground covered. Um, unfortunately, our opponent doesn't really care about the ground, that's for sure. 
So, pass the turn. And Ravager off the top. And Signal Pest. So, can they kill us here? Big attack. Uh, we will... We will chomp. Uh, take... Five confirmed. Alright, Punish is gone with the five. That's fair enough. <laughs> Alright, we're probably weren't going to win this one anyway, but... Here we are. So yeah, I mean, we play out our stuff. It's, like, not very influential. Um, Ink Moth can't kill them. Yeah, I think we just needed more gas. Oh well, pack it up. Dead next turn, almost certainly. Opponent just, uh, sacrifices everything. I guess, uh, we could represent something, but... You know, who has time to represent something, you know? Alright. Gone to sideboards now. Pretty, pretty easy. It's just, uh, four nature's claims. <laughs> I guess we could consider Dismember. Maybe we do consider Dismember. Um, Urza against a fast deck. I think ugh, I think in this matchup we'll probably have to cut Urza. Um, and cut this... Uh, well, I'll go against my better judgement and take it out. Only because um, how much of a beating it will be, you know. If we don't win with Urza, I mean, if we're not winning with Urza, then what's the point of playing Urza's Scales Affinity? <laughs> Alright, let's go to the next one. Cool. On the play for game number two. And uh, this hand looks a little bit more busted. We'll keep it. On the play, we get a little bit more, and also, you know, we get to lead on Hardened Scales and follow up with a Metallic Mimic and go from there. Pretty nice, neat little hand. It's really nice to have uh, Hardened Scales in your opening hand makes a difference. Alright. Opponent. Thinking over their cards. Are we going to get Leyline of the Voided? Maybe. Alright. So, Welding Jar. And Sanctum. And Hunt Scales. Yeah, this is definitely one of the better hands that we've had. Just a bunch of two drops, but two drops are now really important because of the, uh, the mowing. We're going to do some mowing with Walking Ballista, I think. Bolt's coach for our opponent. And... Passes. Uh, maybe we play the control role. Uh, I guess we can take a turn to set up. So, the consideration is definitely on whether or not we play Metallic Mimic. If we can play Walking Ballista on... Uh, or we can just do this. I guess we play out the Hangback Walker. Play the Hangback Walker. I don't want to play out the Walking Ballista because it's kind of our removal spell at the moment. Probably want to keep it at that. Yeah, I guess he could come in with two counters. Alright, we'll see. Opponent, let's follow up. Rest in peace. Alright, well we have the nature's claim for that, but that is very annoying. <laughs> but it has all the answers. Alright, and gets in. That's fine. Well, now land wouldn't be too bad. Alright, there's a land. So we will... Walking Ballista. Just for one. Yep. Comes in with an extra counter on it, so we'll just, uh, bibbidi boo this one. And yeah, opponent didn't have the follow ups, and Walking Ballista was probably gonna get bigger every turn. Okay, fair enough. Well, that felt good. Going sideboards now, I think we're just gonna keep it how is. Um, I like the nature's claims a lot, just as a little bit of life gain. Uh, don't feel bad about taking out the Ancient Stirrings, although, of course, it's annoying. You're like, your count of colored, colored cards are now a lot higher, so it's just less influential. Um, you see the power of, uh, having Nature's Claim in your hand. <laughs> Speaking of the devil, we'll keep this. It's good, because it also kills their artifacts, like, it gains us a little bit of life in a pinch as well. Here's Mox Opal for our opponent, and Memnite. Follow up, Steel Overseer. Well, that is probably going to elicit the... Huh. One, two, three. Cool. Okay. Well, let's do this then. So, do this, do this, do this. And then, yeah, I think we're just going to prevent our opponent from untapping with, um... This, uh... This Steel Overseer. It's just, like, so bad for us, of course. Alright, pass the turn. We have the Nature's Claim, but, um... I think, uh... Yeah. I don't know. Maybe Dismember's not even the right call, but if it's going to be on anything, it's got to be on the Steel Overseer. It can just get so powerful. Our Memnite gets in. No blocks. Not making that trade. 
Follow up is... Vault Scourge with life. Okay, opponent has one card in hand. Maybe they mulliganed a little bit, but I am not going to complain. So we'll play the Ink Moth Nexus and hang a backwalker. Leave up Nature's Claim for... Uh, I mean, probably for Cranal Plating or experiment, Experimental Frenzy. If our opponent's just, like, gearing up to play Experimental Frenzy, we probably want to kill that. Especially because I have two cards in hand that haven't cast one yet. It's definitely not a... Definitely not a Cranal Plating. We'll see what it is. Uh, rest in peace. That's fine. So, we, we are going to take care of this rest in peace, uh, because our kind of only line is Hangerback Walker, and if we untap, it will be definitely good, so, whoops. Nice to have sideboard cards. Alright, take it out. Probably goes to 25, which is definitely not ideal, but we can in fact kill them pretty quickly if we get the right draws. This does not count as the right draws, unfortunately. So... I think we're going to play the Ink Moth Nexus here. The upside is a little bit higher. Um, we're probably going to try and kill them with uh, with Infect damage. So probably want to turn that on as fast as possible. But it is not very good that we're drawing a lot of lands in a row. We're not playing any more lands. So, Alright, one card left in hand. That card is... And goes to combat. Fair enough. Are we going all swinging? All swinging is bad. No, well, opponent goes against better judgment. But we will. I think we're blocking here. Are we gonna get blown out? I think we might get blown out. We'll just kill one. Uh, do the thing. I think if our opponent is holding up a removal spell. And we let the Arcbound Ravager die, it could be pretty bad news. Well, there's a Ravager. That's good news. One, two, three. So let's play Ravager. Uh, can we win? I don't think we can win here. Especially because our opponent has Vault Scourge on blocking duty. We can attack and then just like trade with one of our Ink Moths. We'd be pretty okay with that. Um, so, we're playing this Yavimaya Coast, I think we're going to attack. I want this one. So if we attack, yeah, I think if we attack our opponent has to block, and we trade them the Vault Scourge for one Ink Moth, that's probably okay. Alright, get in. Yeah, almost certainly have Lethal Infect if we do this, so... see what they do. Yeah, just gonna chomp. Um... I think we just let it go. Let it go, let him gain a bit of life. We're gonna kill him with impact damage anyway. And pass time. Okay, so no hardened scales win here, so it's a little bit clunky, but... I think our opponent's probably stumbling a little bit on tempo. And yeah, we win the match. Alright, fantastic. Let's go to game... two. Alright. Game number three for Urza's Scales Affinity. <coughs> and yeah, we'll go first. Um, I think we keep this hand. It's a little bit fair, but uh, Ancient Stirring just so hopefully dig us into more. So Botanical Sanctum and Ancient Stirrings. Um, Take Mox Opal. Everything to the bottom. Mox Opal. Pass the turn. Yeah, a little bit sketchy with the Ancient Stirrings and the um, Urza, obviously. Not a great combo, but um, should still be fine. Forest for our opponent. And Animation Module. Alright. Well, it appears to be the, uh, the Mirror. We'll see who can go off harder and faster. So... Play Hangerback Walker. And pass the turn. We could have one, one extra mana with the uh, if we played the Darkseal Citadel instead, but it doesn't really do anything here, so we'll just pass. Alright. 
Opponent untaps. Being on the play is super important for this. Ink Moth for our opponent. And... A2 drop, I'm sure. Metallic Mimic, okay. Are we naming Servo or Constructor? Beast, okay, fair enough. Well, we're gonna ping this down with a Walking Ballista, I think. And Mox Opal. And pass. So we will... Dark Seal Citadel. And, yeah, I think we're just gonna kill the, um... The Metallic Mimic. Uh, nice to keep our Walking Ballista around. There's definitely an argument for... Uh, just untapping... Uh, tapping the Hangback Walker, but... I think we'll be fine here. Definitely a fair hand from both starts, but we'll see what we can come up with. Alright. Opponent goes to 19. Pass the turn. There's the Ravager. And could probably make a token here if they so choose. I'm sure they will. Yep. Makes the servo. Uh, wouldn't be a bad time to draw an Urza, honestly. Not that it does a huge amount on this board, but, um... I guess that's pretty close to spinning the wheel, as well. Alright, Pone's gonna sack the Mox Opal for another Mox Opal in hand. There's Mox Opal. Follow-up is... Ancient Stones, perhaps? Just sacks it. To pay for... Thingy. That's fine. Yeah, it makes another servo. Do we have another Mox Opal? Another Mox Opal. Okay, opponent has two cards in hand. And a land. Four drop? I mean, two drop? It's a Ravager. Alright, well... Big starts from our opponent, that's for sure. And passes. We untap. Hardened Scales is definitely a good card to draw, so we will play the Hardened Scales for sure. Nice to be the first person to get the Hardened Scales, that's for sure. And we will Ravager. Uh, I don't think we're killing everything here. Alright. We do have a lot of combat damage here. So if our, I'm sure our opponent chump chumps. One, two... Let's see. Yeah, they just, they just chump chump, so... We can go... Four... Five, six... Tap this seven, eight... Uh... So one, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, eleven, twelve. Yeah, no lethal this turn, but we do have it set up for next turn. Probably gonna tick up the hangerback walker here. All right, put it on taps. See what they come up with. They might be able to kill us this turn with the ink moth nexus, so it's probably something to keep in mind. Uh, not that there's anything that we can... Oh, we can sacrifice the Hangerback Walker to jump. That's probably a reasonable line as well. Alright. Opponent. Big Walking Ballista, I think. Yep, Walking Ballista, X2. Zero cards in hand for our opponent. Yeah, that makes it a little bit awkward because they can ping down our Hangerback Walker. Okay. So we're just going to sacrifice this. Now, the question is do we want to draw a card? Because now our Hangback Walker is going to be less influential. It prevents us from drawing a card next time. 
Big attack. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that's fine. We'll just take it here. Now, do we... Alright, I think we're gonna tap this. Mm. Alright, let's draw a card instead. It was tempting to... Uh, tick up the Hangerback Walker just to bait out the Walking Ballista, but I think this is fine. So, you have my Coast. Arcbound Worker. Comes in with two counters. Be nice to have a flyer, but what can you do? All right, tick up hanger back walker. Give them the opportunity to ping. No, they don't go for it. Fair enough. So eat that. Play mox opal. So we can attack. If we attack our opponent, almost certainly chumps, but I guess we can sound blocks. Sound blocks, we have the bigger Ravager, but we do have many lethal from here, so should be good. Alright, opponent. Welding jar. That's fine. Let's we'll see if they feel like going attacking. They probably can, if they wanted to. They can't really attack profitably with the Ink Moth Nexus, but... Hmm. Was there a cards in hand? Hmm. It's an interesting concept, for sure. Yep, fires up the Ink Moth. Well, we're dead if that Ink Moth hits, so we do have to now start to act. Yep, fires up the Inky. Well, luckily we have three counters on the Hangerback Walker, so our opponent can kill one of the three Thopters that we'll make, but they can't kill all, all of them, so we will gladly trade here. Gonna get him. Yep. Yep. Fair enough. So we will sacrifice the Hangerback Walker, make some Thopters, just for blocking. Uh, things could get weird if our opponent tries to load everything up on the walking blister. They're sacking... Sacrificing something. Alright, animation module. <laughs> Triggers. Yep. Gonna start sacrificing stuff. Well, I don't know... It, it works a lot better when you're the reactive deck, because if our opponent tries to kill anything um, with Walking Ballista, we can just sacrifice to the Hangerback Walker, uh, to the Arcbound Ravager. And the mass kind of works out in our favor, because if they if they go to kill the Arcbound... Uh, they could just kill us here. Hopefully they don't. Yep. I'm gonna put some counters on Walking Ballista. If they put too much on the Walking Ballista, then we can, um... Uh, what can we do? It kind of prevents them from killing us with infect damage, which is what they're hoping to do, I'm sure. So now we gotta just kind of do some mass. So if Ravager kills... The Animation Module that goes to 4, the Mox Opal that goes to 5, the Welding Jar goes to 6, 7, 8... Um... Uh. <laughs> big stack, big stack. Pings. Well, we'll probably keep one around. Uh, and then put... We don't just die here, right? One, two. Alright, one, two. Uh, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine. What if we just let this happen? We get so many triggers off the Arcman Ravager. Yeah, I think we let this go. We want to get the counters from Walking Ballista. Alright. <clears throat> so it gets a very large Arcman Ravager. Uh, but we're not dead here, fortunately. We go to 9, if I'm not mistaken. And they have to deal with these... If they want to sack their board, they're kind of dead to... Uh, our creatures that we have on the battlefield, so... We'll see if it's enough. Yeah, having the hardened scales and having your opponent not have the hardened scales is definitely good. Alright, no blocks. Are they sacrificing at all? Because the maths works out in our favor, if I'm not mistaken. One, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. So they couldn't kill all of our blockers and pump their ink moth, so I think they're just dead here. Yeah, we just take two. Now they can definitely go in next turn, which could be awkward. We'll have to figure out. We'll have to top deck something good, I think. Hanger back walk is very good draw. Alright. So this should probably elicit the concession, honestly. Uh, play a hanger back walker. It's quite large. Now we attack with both creatures and, like, have to do something about it. So attack, attack. I mean, they can weld something back, but uh, they're just gonna let it go. Huh. Fair enough. Well, they go to three. Yeah, should have just killed them there, probably. Oh, in all honesty, probably should have killed them. <laughs> They've, uh, ooh, hardened scales. Okay. So now we might actually just be dead. That's a shame. Man, don't want to miss lethal, uh... Don't accidentally stuff up miss lethal too many times, that's for sure. Alright, so opponent can fire up one of their ink moths. We're probably okay. We have three blockers. Yeah, the mask gets really difficult on this one. But we can, uh, sacrifice... Uh, we can sacrifice whatever to put counters on the Thopter. Yeah, we just got there. Okay, cool. So that was a really interesting match. Um, we sort of, like, were on the back foot, but basically we just had the hardened scales first. Which is good. So, going into sideboards now. Probably the same deal as before. I don't even know if this... Probably just not dismember. I don't want to go too deep on it. Um, take out two of these. And take out a relic. And run it like that. See how we go. Still want to be as powerful as possible. But yeah, we did definitely were the Harden Scales player who drew Harden Scales first. Didn't get too done in by our Urza, but it was nice to have it. <laughs> Hopefully in this league we'll see Urza go off. I suppose if we played four of them it would be a different story, but um, you can definitely understand why having a four drop can be... Like a four drop with two pips of mana is like pretty hard to play in this deck, so... Don't want to draw it too often, but I'd like to draw it sometimes. Can't play Pithing Needle, unfortunately. It'd be nice to consider it, I guess, but it just like also turns off all of our stuff. I guess it's nice if we're behind. Yeah. Oh well, see how we go. Yeah, our own ley lines of the void, you know. See if our opponent's playing ley lines. They very well might be. If that's the new tech. I kinda like Tormod's Crypt, because you can find it with um Ancient Stirrings and it costs zero mana and you know, it's just good 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 cards like that, you know? Alright. Let's go on to the next game. Um, okay, this is a pretty fine hand. Too slow on the play, maybe, but we'll keep. If our opponent just, like, plays Hardened Scales on turn one, we probably lose, but we'll see. Alright. 
Ink Moth, and well, that bodes well for us. Just a worker. Okay. So hard scales off the top. <laughs> Couldn't be so lucky. Alright, forest and animation module. Huh! Just move that up there. And mox opal. And pass it down. So if we draw a citadel, we can have three mana, but again, it's not three mana's not really where we want to be. It's more of the I guess if we draw a one drop it'd be better, obviously. Alright, forest for our opponent. And what's the draw? Hang a backwalker. Okay, opponent is playing fair magic, certified fair magic. We are also playing fair magic, but we're on the draw, so we kind of probably need hardened scales, honestly. As it could change us around. Well, there's Citadel. So play Citadel. Uh, play our own uh, hang a backwalker. And because of this cool interaction, it'll go on the stack, and it actually turns on our Mox Opal, so we can pay for this now. Yes, please. Alright, make a servo, pass the turn. Alright, well animation module is a nice consolation prize, that's for sure. Mox Opal for our opponent, and... Arcban Ravager. Okay, well we have one of those. And we have the animation module to help sort of power things out. Um, we're probably just playing the Arcban Ravager. Very fair, fair things happening on this side of the board. Um, yeah, that's fine, we'll take one. Alright, take one. Our opponent has the Ink Moths though, so that's something that we do have to be aware of. Alright, untap. Harden Scales. Alright, baby. Now we're talking. So, play Harden Scales. We love to draw the Harden Scales first. <laughs> Important part of the matchup, for sure. And we will... Play... Ravager. Comes in with an extra counter, triggers animation module. So now we want to play... Uh, now we want to see some Urza action happening. So, we'll see. But yeah, make a servo. And no attacks. Keep him back on D. Doing a little bit of sack in action. Alright. Opponent got the plus one plus one counter. That's fine. And passes. Opponent untaps. One card in hand. Two cards in hand. Oh, we're pretty well insulated against uh, Ink Moth Nexus just killing us here, which is good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I guess we should actually block. Yeah, we got to block. If our opponent plays Walking Blister, it gets a little bit awkward. Now there's a Walking Blister. Okay, so now we're going to probably do a little bit of fancy footwork here. If our opponent fires off Ink Moth. If they fire up Ink Moth, they can just kill us here. So in that case, we probably... Yeah. All right. So we let him attack. <sighs> oh, maths. Okay. So one, two. I'll do it. I'll do it here so you can watch. One, two. So sacrifice this to this. So that counts for two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, 9, 10. Yeah, so they have 10 here, so we do have to block. But now we have to do it in a way that prevents our opponent from walking blistering. So... We'll sacrifice a land. Put a counter on. And... I think we have to... Yep. No. I think we have to try and put stuff onto Hangerback Walker so our opponent kills in response, because otherwise they just kill the Thopter and it kind of gets a bit awkward. I guess actually... Yeah, let's do it that way. So... Sacrifice Hangerback Walker. Make a Thopter. If our opponent 
targets it with Walking Ballista. Oh, actually, yeah, we're on the back foot now, so it's kind of a bit awkward. Put a counter on it. Try to go to blocks. Our opponent almost certainly won't go to blocks, but now we've got to figure out how big we can make the Arcman Ravager. Because they can make their Walking Ballista somewhat large as well. Very interesting matchup for sure. There's a lot of uh, a lot of moving parts happening here, but I think again because we have the hardened scales, we'll just win this interaction. Yeah. So they do. They gotta they gotta kill because if they don't kill the Thopter, then we just block and everything's fine. We can even sacrifice it to the Arcman Ravager. Alright, pass priority to them. They have to kill the Thopter, otherwise we get the sweet block action. But if they do that, then we just gotta work out uh, the sacrificing, because our opponent will basically have to sacrifice their board. Um, modular. So we can't react here. Because if we react, our opponent can just kill in response. Alright, so let that happen. Yeah, this actually... Like, so, we'll start sacrificing stuff. And... Yeah, I think this, I think this works out in our opponent's favor. No... So one damage on the stack, and yeah, we gotta, yeah, yeah, our opponent can, maybe they can't kill us now actually, but we will lose a lot of equity by doing this. So, sack, sack Arc Band Ravager, put it on the Thopter. Um, our opponent can ping it in response, but then they lose most of their stuff, and I don't think they'll be able to kill us here. It's definitely not good. But we have another Arcban uh, Hangerback Walker to hopefully protect from the next onslaught, but we do need a sacrifice effect. Alright, opponent's gonna start loading up their stuff now. Yep. Plus one, plus one counter. I think. I think we're okay. We do need. We do need a really good top deck though. Yep, it's gonna start sacrificing their stuff. They don't need to go too deep on this, I don't think. They just wanna put a bunch of counters on their walking ballista so they can kill Thopter and have stuff around, but if they put everything onto the walking ballista, then they can't put everything onto the Ink Moth Nexus. So that's a small upside for us. So if they accidentally get the stack mixed up, I'm gonna sacrifice some more stuff. Because if they leave this, put a plus one plus one counter and Arcbound Ravager trigger, then they just miss out on a point of damage because the Arcbound Worker will be dead. Oh, fair enough. Okay, well they miss two of them, I guess. It's an interesting choice. Sacrifice your board and then not get the uh, the triggers. But that's fine. They miss out on two counters. And we don't die, so... Yep. They wipe our board. Stack clears. But now it's just a... Um, now it's just a 1-1. One -one. So... Not very scary, that's for sure. Yep. A 4-4 four -four walking ballista is obviously a pain in the neck, but... You can play a pretty big hangerback walker here. Now, I probably can't kill us yet, so... Uh, we don't have, uh, it's kind of annoying. We don't have Metalcraft? Beats. Beats by Dre. Alright, well we'll play a 1, a 2-2 two -two Hangerback Walker. And... Uh, I think we're actually drawing a card here. Yeah, we'll just draw a card here, I think. Pass the turn. 
Opponent can't kill us. They have a big walking ballista, but that's not that big of an issue. We probably, honestly, we probably block. If our opponent wants to be like that. Nature's claim our hanger back walker. Well, that is unfortunate. All right. Gain a bit of life. Life is good. Life is good. Get the death trigger. Get two thopters. Probably not gonna hang around for too much longer, but makes their walking ballista smaller, so it's not actually that big of a deal. Um, okay. I think our opponent might be making a couple of misclicks, which is unfortunate, but do what you gotta do, huh? Uh, a win's a win's a win's a win, honestly. So I think, I think we're taking it here. This just like negates the um, nature's claim damage that we would've gotten anyway. It's probably okay. All right, so let's sacrifice this, draw a card. Draw another land. All right, well, glad we drew, drew a card, because that would have been bad. That's good. All right, so now we play Ravager. That should uh, protect us a lot from what our opponent is doing. And yes, I would love to pay for the ability. Make a servo. Another servo in the wings. And I think, I think we get in? Is our opponent going to kill us with, well they can just ping these down if they want to do it. Yeah, let's get in. Alright, get in for two. Have enough mana to make our walking ballista, uh, hanger back, uh, <laughs> ravager, one power tarfa, killing the servo. My opponent has a Ravager. Alright, now now we're back in trouble again. But they're not going to kill us this time. My opponent gets in. Nope, no getting in. Okay. Alright, opponent passes. So we will... Uh, sacrifice this servo. Trigger animation module. Yep, make a servo. Just a nice little interaction there. Alright, almost time for them to give us Urza. <laughs> Alright, um... Can we attack here? I think we can. We go attack, attack. They kind of have to block the hangar by the Arcman Ravager. Oh, they didn't block it? Zero cards in hand? Okay. I think we can kill them. Uh... So, okay, well, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Yeah, this is just lethal. Whee! I love lethal. Alright, so sacrifice an artifact. It's this Thopter. Put a counter on it. Uh, do that. Sacrifice the servo. Yeah, animation module is kind of like its own little hardened scales, and when they work together, it's just like insane. Um, pay one. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, that's good. We had him on lethal. Opponent, like you gotta. Always check for lethal. <laughs> it's usually a good rule. And we're uh, 2 and 1. Feels good. Feels good. Alright. Match 4 for Urza's Scales Affinity. <laughs> Rolls off the tongue. Harden Scales Urza. Something that we're testing out here in the uh, magical world of CBRMTG. Opponent. Oh, we lost the dice roll. Sucks. So we reversed Affinity. Uh, beat them, versus Hardened Scales, we beat them, lost two Teamer Elementals, which I can't even be angry about, because they just, they just murdered us. <laughs> There's not much you can do about that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Should be fine. Alright. See if our opponent decides whether or not they want to play first. I would recommend for it. Alright. Opponent decides to play first. We will... I think we keep this hand. Um, hopefully it doesn't bite us back in the ass again. Again, it's just like... Finding the hardened scales is definitely where you want to be, but animation module, a neat little side, side, uh, side benefit. So play animation module, huh. pass the turn. 
Uh, next turn, if we draw an opal, we'll gladly play another animation module in an Arcbound Ravager, but probably... Uh, yeah, thank you, opponent. <laughs> Fortunately, only one more uh, forest, but we do have a forest. Not sure about the Assassin's Trophy ramping plan, but it is what it is. Let's make him pay for it. Hardened Scales. Yeah, baby. And we will... Yeah, I think we're at Ravager here. Looks like our opponent's playing Jund. Um, so it's good to get the Arcbound Ravager on the battlefield as soon as possible. Yeah. Not sure about the uh, Assassin's Trophy, but here we are. Liliana. Alright, well that is bad for us. Cool, fair enough. So they get to take care of our creature, but we're gonna... Um... Haha, you fool. We will do the sacking. Um, but yeah, we get to untap and kind of play a bunch of stuff and kill this Liliana, so not hugely worried. So play land, uh, play Mimic on Construct this time. Kind of got to play it on a couple of different things each time, but this is definitely fine. Big old walking blister, and yeah, we'll take down that Liliana straight up and pass the turn. All right. Coming along, coming along. Be nice to have that uh, that uh, payoff card soon. Either uh, another hanging back walker, or another walking ballista. We have animation module. Uh, yeah, not much we can do about that one. So we will ping you in the face. Yep, ping you in the face. That's fine. Dude, this is like a really favorable matchup because like none of our creatures like matter. <laughs> Like, they pay one mana and we just ping them for two, you know? And once we get this animation module online, it's just gonna be, like, impossible for our opponent to win. Alright, Blood Stay Maya. And Fetal Push? Nihil Spell Bomb. Okay. That's not very important to us. So, we'll play the Yav Maya. Because obviously it's a good idea to play the uh, Ink Moth, but. What can you do? Oh man, we absolutely have no way to put candles on stuff. That's pretty funny. Okay, pass the turn. We need something to set off this first animation module. Um, so basically any draw will be fine. But we do need something. Hex Drinker for our opponent. Levels up. Levels up. And... Levels up. Okay. 4-4, four, four, protection from instance. I am scared. We will take this damage here, unfortunately. We, um... Metallic Mimic, like any X spell is just good for us. Not Botanical Sanctum. Ugh. Alright, play the Ink Moth. Pass the turn. Now we're gonna take a lot of damage here. We gotta have something to set these uh, this Metallic Mimic off first. Yep, opponent draws a card. Exiles our graveyard. That's fine. Again, another small reason to play the... Um, Botanical Sanctum tapped, because then if we top deck an Urza, we can play it immediately. But I think having the Ink Moth is probably important here. Our opponent's just going to make a 6 6 protection from everything. Which is definitely not good for us. Yep, protection from everything. And gets in. Luckily they put all of their mana into it in the world, so we'll just fire up this Inky. And then chump block the Tamagoyf, because we don't want to take 10 here, that's for sure. Alright, chump block. And... Oh, that's fine. Another land? Oh, that's very bad for us. Well, we didn't want to draw the extra, extra, extra land, but that's fine. <laughs> we can uh, tap the animation module to give our Tamag make the Tamagoyf even smaller, which we're probably going to do, honestly. No reason not to. Alright, opponent has Blood Braid into Liliana. Well, that's very bad. Yeah, not good. Not good, not good. So... Put a minus one, minus one counter on this. It doesn't trigger animation module. I wish it did, but it just doesn't. So now we're going to take... Uh, 10? Yeah, we're just dead. Alright, fair enough. Better jundered us. We got jundered. 
I think if we had animation module online a little bit earlier, it might have been a different story, but here we are. Cool, fair enough. Then he killed us dead. Alright, going to sideboards. We want. Do we want Pithing Needle? We might want Pithing Needle. We definitely want Dismember. Um. We definitely want Stubborn Denial. And I think that's it. We could consider Nature's Claim for our opponent's hate, but it's probably just not worth it. Uh, and then we just drop the stirrings. Drop the stirrings. We've got so many less hits now. Uh, everything else is pretty influential. I guess Relic is less influential, but it's definitely something. Nice to have a little bit of main deck graveyard hate in this current climate, although we haven't really seen any reason to have main deck graveyard hate in these matches. Ooh, it's close. It's close. I think we'll keep. The upside is just so high, you know. If we top deck uh, a Greenland, and we have so many of them now, uh, I guess we have the same amount as usual, because we're replacing all of our forests with green-blue lands, but this is still fine. So, Ink Moth, and Animation Module, and Welding Jar. Pass the turn. Probably... Keeping the Animation Module alive? I don't think we need to. Alright, pass the turn. Dark Steel Shadowdell. Well, that's not the draw we were looking for, unfortunately. That was the opposite of the draw we were looking for. So... Yeah, play the worker. Uh, triggers Animation Module. And make a servo. So this is, like, what Jund really hates seeing. It's just, like... Um... I think we're keeping this alive, honestly. Just taking the one for one. I guess one for two. Uh, and then we're going to pay for this for sure. So we just want to put as many dorks on the battlefield as possible. Um, try and continually do that throughout the course of the turn. Uh, not. Uh, I guess we can pay three to put another counter on Arcban Worker and that will trigger our animation module, but not really doing anything at the moment, that's for sure. Alright, opponent has the Tamagoyf. Well, we'll probably dismember that. I do want Hardened Scales to be online at some point. Oh, well, that turns it on, so that's good. So do this. Uh, do this. And now I think we just take the turn to play Hardened Scales and then one, two, three. Yeah, we can do this at any time. We'll just uh, pass the turn here. This makes it a three, three. I guess we attack. Attack! See if our opponent falls into our trap. No blocks. Ooh, blocks. Alright, that's pretty bad for you. So, put two plus one plus one counters on it. Whee! Opponent trades. It is not a profitable trade. Onboard tricks. Onboard tricks. Getting tricky here with our onboard tricks. Alright, opponent untaps. And. That's good. That means that we don't have to use our dismember. And we have hardened scales online now. We can kind of just make a bunch of servos. Um, we are down a game. Assassin's Trophy on the animation module. Well, there's our green mana. <laughs> Not that it really matters now, but that's fine. Opponent missing their land drop is something that we definitely want to see. So. Get Inky. Get Inky. Attack with all. Not doing anything else, may as well just attack. We have enough mana for dismember as well. Pass the turn. Whoops, I guess we turn off all the yields. Hex Shrinker. Oh, please put all your, uh... Yes. So... Alright, let's just kill this. Pony doesn't want to put more mana into it, but I think we're happy with that. Yeah, that's good. They got to devote a little bit of mana to it, which is just fine. Oh, Walking Ballista is a good draw. Alright, so play Walking Ballista. X... X1... Do we want to attack without Inkies? I guess we just go all in. Two, three. 
Alright. Let's do this. So, flow to mana, play our Mox Opal. We'll just go all in on this Walking Ballista. Kind of sucks if there's a, a Fatal Push, but at least we get the dubious amounts of mana that comes out of it. Yep. Play a big Walking Ballista. Ugh. It's a 4-4. Four -four. And we're still, yeah, still going in. Opponent missing land drops. Hopefully going to punish them. Alright. Fetches Wooded Foothills. 1, 2, 3. Just comes in tapped. Alright. Fair enough. Ugh. Get in there. So we can uh, ping our Arcbound Ravager down. <laughs> Puts our Walking Ballista to... Uh, puts our walking bill listed to 1, and then the module trigger goes on the stack and makes it a 4... a 5-5? Five five? That's pretty decent. We can keep that in our back pocket. Oh, damnation, never mind. <laughs> Alright, well, I guess we're doing it this way then. So, kill the worker. Just trying to maximize the amount of damage that we're going to deal to our opponent. This is very annoying, obviously, but it is what it is. So this dies, puts it on this. Uh, yep. Please, I would love to use the ability. Oh, make your own, uh... Make your own Arcbound Ravager. <laughs> Alright, ping our opponent. Ping our opponent. Damnation was a good draw, that's for sure. Ping our opponent. Opponent, making sure that they can respond in between, which is very important. Alright, put our opponent to 5, which is important, but kind of don't really have anything on at the moment. Except for this Hardened Scales and these Ink Moth Max Eyes. <laughs> Alright. Play? Hardened Scales. Make an Inky. Make an Inky. Get in. No use hiding what we're doing. Alright, 4 Infect, 5 damage. So, they're dead to a top deck Walking Ballista, although we've already used... Oh, I've only used one. Okay. Opponent passes. We untap. And uh, not the draw we were looking for, so... Play an Inky. <laughs> Play an Inky. Opponent's going to murder one, that's fine. It was inevitable, not exactly the line you want to take when you're versing Jund, because you only have four ways to deal Infect. So it kind of makes it a little bit awkward. Uh, play this tapped Sanctum. Pass the turn. And now we're on five and five, so... But probably not just going to randomly attack with the Ink Moth anymore. Um, just not really a great idea. Unless we draw nothing. I guess we just keep this going in that case. Because we could just like put it all on if we like rebuild. Um, but pretty happy for them to use their removal here. That's fine. Pass the turn. No more lands, please. Alright, Plague Engineer. Wonder what they name here. It doesn't quite work as they hoped, but I guess you can name Thopter. Just kind of sucks no matter what you choose, really. Names construct. Yeah, well, they're going to come in with a million counters on them, so that's not really that much of an issue. Alright. That's a land, but it's an okay land. Draw a card. Ravager. Notably, not a construct. <laughs> Pass the turn. I guess we turn off water yields here, just in case they bolt us. Alright, now we can make this Ravager pretty large. And obviously, they do have a lot of removal that gets rid of it, but yeah, that's fine. Another Plague Engineer. On Beast? Are we doing it? <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Pony can get in if they so choose. Yep, that's fine. No blocks. Untaps. Worker. Well, that's a construct, but it still stays alive, so we'll definitely play it. It's a 2-2. Two -two. And... <sighs> if 
I don't think we get in, unfortunately. We can, like, get in and put everything on the worker if they don't block. We just kill them if they don't block. But the question is... I think we can wait. Let's wait. Uh, wait a couple more turns, I think. But we're definitely... We're definitely where we want to be. Opponent can turn it around at any instant. They do have four cards in hand and the deck is mono removal, so it gets a little bit icky like that, but... Hopefully the two... The two creatures will be a little bit too, too tough to deal with. Opponent, no attacks. Keeping our creatures at bay. Well, they're still dead to a walking blister. <laughs> Alright. Little Old Grove. Crack it. Draw card. We're doing it. Cycling through our deck like nobody's business. Another Ravager's good. So next turn, if they don't have a removal spell, we can kill them because we just attack with two, three creatures and they can only block one. And they can only block two. And we're pretty insulated from non-Fatal Push, non-Liliana, non-Assassin's Trophy, non... <laughs> we're safe for a Fatal Push. But besides that, we're pretty much dead to anything. Probably not going to go all in just yet. We'll take our time. There's no point in not taking our time. Alright. Opponents thinking about whether or not they want to attack. Probably a bad idea unless your hand is all removal. Alright. Opponent deep in the tank, after all. <sighs> yeah, not sure about this one. I probably am not going all in in any sense, but I guess theoretically we can just uh, attack with all and let the creatures die and then we have one more left over. I guess if we have one more creature we can do that because we just don't want to like die to a fatal push, you know? If they like trade with our creatures, modular triggers go on the stack and they fatal push, uh, then obviously we're in not great, not great stead. As it would be alright. <laughs> not that it does anything exactly here, but... Always fun to, always fun to draw an Urza. Alright. Opponent passes. Metallic Mimic. Well that... <laughs> yeah, that's fine, I guess. We can't name, um, Beast nor Construct. So we're gonna name, uh, Servo, just in case these. Don't want to turn it into a Beast to get blown out. But next turn, we can probably go all in. I think now we just want to be as reactive as possible with our opponent's multiple removal spells. Stubborn Denial wouldn't go awry here, that's for sure. Alright, here comes Blood Braid Elf. Well, this is our chance. Ancient Grudge, that's fine. See what they try and pick off. Still missing their land hits, you know. Um, that's fine. Modular. I'll just put it on the Ravager. Make it a certified big boy. Seven seven. Can't attack. Yeah, we're still at the parity where we need to have probably two more creatures than our opponent. The animation module is such a great draw. Feels good, honestly. So now we can... I guess we can do this at instant speed. And we'll pass the turn. No attacks. We're going to make a buttload of servos next turn, and they're all going to be quite large, actually. We actually only need to sacrifice one thing, and then we can uh, go off. Make a bunch of tutus. Alright, so we're, we're gonna go for that, for sure. So sacrifice Darksteel Citadel. Yep. So the opponent has a problem here, because if they, they... They can Ancient Grudge something, but we're just gonna make a bunch of 4-4s, four so... They're pretty content on not killing our... Um... Arcman Ravager, which is good. Uh, on not on our animation module. Now we go infinite with Urza if we find it. But we'll settle for making a bunch of four fours. That's for sure. Yep, bunch of four fours. 
Yay! All right, fantastic. We got there. Yeah, animation module, not what your gender opponent wants to see, that's for sure. Um, do we want to change anything? Probably not. We could... There's an argument for Pithing Needle, I suppose? You're just like, taking Liliana. Yeah, I don't think it's worth it. We're just trying like that. Hope to get lucky again. See how we go. But yeah, we were just gonna just right-click attack all there. It was gonna feel pretty good. Alright. See what our opponent's up to. Uh, yeah, this hand's fine. We will keep... Looking for any, um, uh, looking for something, looking for a construct, <laughs> there's Urza, alright, well this seems to be the match where we're playing Urza, so I guess we do that then, play Welding Jar, Pen and Fetches, gonna kill our nothing, Blood Crypt, tapped, oh, that's great. So, play an opal, play... We want to play lead on the metallic mimic? I guess we're just going for the ravager. We've got protection of three ways from Sunday, so we'll do that. We do need to draw a land to turn on this, um, to turn on this Urza, but we're pretty close, honestly. Welding Jar's a great hand, great card to have in your hand against Junt, for sure. Alright. Penadraw's Blooming Marsh. And here comes the Ren and Six. So if our opponent ticks down, we're probably just going to sacrifice the Welding Jar. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Alright. Eat the Welding Jar. Stop that from happening. Also, we get to untap and just kill it, so that feels pretty good. Opponent passes. We draw. Walking Ballista. So now we can kind of, uh... Go pretty ham here. So play Mimic. Um, I think in this time we're gonna name Construct. It's definitely like you need a. Um, you want to be able to combo with uh, by putting Metallic Mimic on Servo to go infinite. But we also have a, a Ravager. Also, we kind of want to enact a game plan as well. So uh, killing the Boogeyman of the format, Renan Six, the non Hogak. Uh, uh, Boogeyman. Alright, opponent plays Thoughtseize. Alright, well, they can have a look. Probably take out Urza. Yeah, sad. Oh, the Urza that never could. We top deck a land, we could have played it. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess go on infinite, infinitely large Ravager. Oh no, we need the, uh, that's, that's fine. Yeah, we were still pretty far away, honestly. So stomping ground for our opponent. You can see the difference between just like, lucking into Urza and, um, you know, the other options. Yeah, Pena needs that. That's fine. So we'll lead it in response. And, yeah, not particularly scared of uh, Red and Six in this particular instance. Untaps. <laughs> there was our Urza land. Shame. Gosh darn shame. So we will uh, attack our opponent, attack Red and Six. Um, and then, yeah, we'll just go for the pump. We can, uh, theoretically leave up Dismember, but I think this is fine. Counters. Things are big. Ren's dead. Sad story ever told. Pass the turn. Now our opponent's on 11. We feel pretty good. We need our opponent to not have any blowouts. Blowouts would be bad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Liliana is fine. Uh, sacrifice a creature, so we will ping Liliana. Liliana goes down. And, yeah, we'll say goodnight to Walking Ballista. Fought hard and fought well. Pass the turn. And now we just have a 3-3. And a Waterlog Grove. Okay, well, let's cycle through this. Try and get something good. Oh, Harden Scales is fine. Play Harden Scales. Go attacking. Now, I guess we gotta decide if we wanna make this lethal for next turn, or if we wanna hold up more mana. 
I guess it's lethal next turn, no matter what. Yep, pass the turn. We don't want to put too many resources into the Ravager in case our opponent just removes it, which is obviously going to be annoying. Alright, Bloodbraid. Bloodbraid needs to get lucky here. Ren and Six, not, probably not the card that they were hoping to draw, honestly. Pretty lackluster in this matchup when everything is not a 1 1. <laughs> Which is funny, because sometimes it uh, really is just a 1-1. One, one. Yeah, opponent just gets back a Wooded Foothills. Plays it for turn, which is fine. They have outs. Fatal Push is good. Opponent gets in. Okay, that's fine. We'll take it. Opponent passes. Alright. So we're not going to go in on all in on Arcbrand Ravager uh, just yet. But we will play another one. And we will attack our opponent's face. Ah, oh, god, our opponent has one card in hand. What's the likelihood? We can go... Four... Ah... Uh, if our opponent has Fatal Push, we're in bad shape. If they have literally anything else, we're fine. We want to let him untap. Uh, I think we'll go... Ah, oh, jeez. This is a hard one. So, if our opponent has exactly Fatal Push, uh, we lose. And they haven't shown us a Fatal Push yet, and they didn't crack their Wooded Foothills in case they wanted to turn it on. I think we just don't take the risk. Um... We can make it... Yeah, let's, uh, let's make it big. We'll make it- we'll go halfway. Keep our regular walking ballista around. Um, and just put them to one. So now they can't activate their wooded foothills. So that's a small consolation prize. And we have dismember up as well. So pretty conservative line, but um, it looks like we would have got there if we did go for it, but probably no reason to just get blown out. Alright, opponent discards a card. Makes another blocker. So, if our opponent attacks, they just lose, which is pretty cool. But they know about the dismember in hand. So it might be less likely. Yeah, opponent gets back Bloodstain Mine. It doesn't do much when you're at one life. Alright, get in opponent. Get greedy. Yeah, opponent's just blocking. Yeah, fair enough. Well, we are going to probably attack both. Mimic is fine. Yeah, our opponent knows that we have, we have Dismember in hand, so I think we just play out our cards and hope to get them next time. Play the Mimic. Uh, this time we're going to name... Name Servo this time. Just in case. Who knows, might get lucky. Name Servo. And, I mean, we can attack. Our opponent has to block block, but if they just chomp... We're definitely attacking with this one. Um... And then I guess we're attacking with this one. My opponent has to give up basically everything, but we lose two removal spells. I'll leave this one back. Alright, get in. Cast uh, Abyss. <laughs> but it has to sacrifice a creature every turn. They choose Elemental. Wise choice. Well, I think we're still okay. We kind of... we're Putting our opponent to one is very important. Because they can't crack their fetches, they can't accumulate value like that, and we're still at a pretty high life total. We will uh, prevent our opponent from getting that benefit though, that's for sure. Yep, put a counter on. Wreck the trigger. This is like John's worst nightmare. Where your opponent's just like, alright, I'll just sack my thing in response. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Plague Engineer, that's fine. Beast for our opponent. And passes. So yeah, still still in the point where... I mean, we can just still just... I think we're probably doing that. So... Dismember the Plague Engineer. Oops, can't do that. Undo. Now our opponent has to chump lock both or they die. Which feels pretty good. Alright. 
Get in there, kids. Yep, opponent blocks. And blocks. That's fine. Send them home to their mothers. And yeah, we need our opponent needs some. They can block with Raging Ravine next turn, but they need a payoff. No trick Pete lands a good redraw. And I guess they get to draw another card. Is this if this is damnation, we're in big trouble. Alright, just a season pyromancer. That's just fine. I have to sacrifice them, so we're still just one removal spell away and one Okay. Fair enough. Uh, one removal spell away, or one creature away from winning. Walking Ballista would be great. Yeah, Citadel's fine. So, get in. All creatures, out of opponent's face. Have to deal with it. I'm drawing a lot of lands this league, but that's okay. Yeah, opponent blocks and blocks. Well, they're running out of options. They got a top deck here. They get... Basically two redraws with uh, the Peatland and then tick up Ren and then Peatland again. I found something good. Ugh, damnation? Why does it have to be Damnation? Alright, fair enough. Couldn't kill our opponent in time. Needed a draw. But there's still a top deck, uh, top deck walking blister away from dying. Uh, we have... We still have three left, so it's not completely out of the realm's possibility. Definitely a lot of good draws. That is not one of them. Alright. Uh, get in there, Hardened Scales. Pass the time. Alright, opponents still can't crack their fetches. We're on 13 life. We've got a little bit of time, but we do need to draw something in the next couple of turns. Opponent has so many cards in hand now. Oh, well, maybe we should have just gone for it. Gotta know when to hold them, know when to fold them, you know? If we were one artifact away and we had two Arcbound Ravages, then we'd just be locked for the win, but what can you do? Then draws a card. Still dead to Walking Ballista. Opponent. Passes. Doesn't... Oh yeah, fair enough. Uh, does this kill us? Kind of. <laughs> Alright. Wee! Not a good, not a good draw. More lands was not on our list of approved draws, but yeah, it's fine. We're kind of below on time as well. Not that it matters too much. Yeah, that's not an issue at all. We're not going to kill you with Infect, so that works out perfectly for us because we have one less land in our deck. All right, pass the turn. Not oh, penny draws. They can Ren Emblem and retrace their Assassin's Trophy, and then it makes things pretty hard to win, but still just have, like, pretty live top decks, you know. Yeah, draws a bunch of cards. They got rid of a bunch of Ren and Sixes, but this one's kind of going away with the game. Oh my gosh. That is not ideal. Opponent has Draw Step Surgical, I would assume. Draw Step Surgical is bad, that's for sure. And we're almost at uh, opponent retracing us to death, which would be less than ideal. Right, opponent thinking through their options. Colligan's command, discard a card. Well, luckily that wasn't a good one. <laughs> Pass the turn. Alright. Give us a live draw. One deck. Opponents have one life. They can crack their fetch by accident. <laughs> There's outs. There's outs. Your opponent, hoping your opponent cracks uh, by accident is definitely an out. Fulminator Mage, not a huge issue. So as a blocker is annoying, but um, it is what it is. Alright, Bloodbraid Elf gets in. 4-3. Clock is on. Opponent ticks down Ren and 6? Come on. You know you want to ultimate. Alright, fair enough. Well, that's pretty bad running so far, honestly. <laughs> but it is what it is. We will turn off water yields here. If our opponent hasn't killed the Ink Moth, we might be able to get him. Yep, opponent has retrace now, has eight cards in hand, so not ideal, not ideal. 
My opponent gets in. Well, we will attempt to block. We may as well. My opponent can retrace Assassin's Trophy, and soon that will not yield us any basics, which is pretty bad. And that's just a fair to push anyway. Yeah, fair enough. Well, get that removal out of their hand, you know. Still need that top deck. Uh, oh, we need a next turn now. Alright, is it Walking Ballista? Ah! Just Metallic Mimic. Our opponent can Colligan's Command every turn as well. Jinkies. Ah, uh, fair enough. Opponent killed us. Yeah. GG, GG. Killed two red and sixes. Wasn't enough. Wasn't enough. And we dropped to two and two. Alright. Final game. Match five. The, the determination between the honorable 3-2 and the shameful 2-3. <laughs> Um, I think we keep this hand. Mox Opal will help things get a little bit more unfair, so nice to have a Welding Jar. Still still playing pretty fairly. Kind of need that Hardened Scales, you know. Always need those Hardened Scales. Alright. Opponent. Silent Clearing. And... Hex Parasite. Alright. Opponent's playing some Spice. Do love to see Spice, that's for sure. So, Botanical Sanctum. Welding Jar. Mox Opal. Pass the turn. Almost two mana, not quite. Duxil Citadel would have helped as well, of course. Um, does this hose us? This kind of hoses us, right? <coughs> ah! Fair enough. Hex Parasite kills us to death. Gotta keep that in mind. Doing nothing. Paying a bunch of life. Huh. Why... Why, oh why, is our opponent doing this? Is our opponent combo killing us? Oh, it's just a death shadow? Uh, okay. Fair enough. They got us. <laughs> uh, yeah, they drew a card. Our opponent's playing, uh, Madu, maybe? So we will... Uh, kind of... Need to worry about this Hex Parasite, which is kind of annoying. So we will... Animation Module. And we'll play this uh, Mimic on Servo, try and uh, limit the amount of plus one plus one counters they get to kill our creatures with. Uh, so we'll name Servo here. Opponent could just combo kill us out with this Death Shadow, which is pretty funny. Uh, we'll pass the turn. We will probably uh, block the Death Shadow and then um, Path to Exile. Okay, that's fine. We have a backup. Get our forest. Opponent passes. So, opponent can't kill us here. <laughs> but they're pretty close. They're pretty close. They can make themselves a 1-1. One -one. And then that will make... Well, they can't make themselves a 1-1 one -one anymore. Which will make Death Shadow a 12-12. 12-13. They can deal 13 damage to us. Interesting. Interesting play for sure. They've got to be careful about these silent clearings though. I guess it doesn't really matter. Death Shadow certified big. What an interesting build. Fair enough. Hex Parasite. Hopefully my really, really, really bad spec of Hex Parasites uh, pays off. Because I was like, ah, dollar box. I may as well buy some uh, thingies. And, uh... Not sure if it's paying off for me, that's for sure. Alright, Cycles, Unearth. And Street Wraiths. Yeah, that's, uh... It's nine power. No small amount of power, that's for sure. Gets in for nine. Puts us to ten. And we're kind of dead next turn. Yep, spell bomb. <laughs> There's our Urza. Well? <laughs> uh, we almost go... I think we go infinite here. Oh, what a perfect way to finish it. Alright. So, undo that. Don't need to take unnecessary damage. Undo. So, this makes a... So, this makes an artifact for us. So, basically costs three. 
And then we get to play uh, this Metallic Mimic on Servo and then go off. We did it. Cool. So Metallic Mimic on Servo. I guess we need to trigger it one time. That's unfortunate. Uh, oh, we, ugh, we can trigger it once. <laughs> so play this. Uh, oh no, we can we can do it. We can do it. All right, we're doing it. So play Arcban Ravager. Get an option to trigger the servo. Can't do it yet. No. Now we're going to sacrifice Welding Jar. Get a counter. Uh, tap the Ravager. Yes. And we go infinite. Hooray. I guess that infinite tap servos is definitely not as good. I'm gonna leave it here. All right, we can go infinite at any time, um, but it doesn't kill our opponent, and our opponent will kill us next turn. So let's opt out of that option. I think. Cool. All right. Well, pass the turn. Leave up a couple of blockers. Next turn, we can kill them. We have everything set up. Yep, Nihil Spellbomb to draw an extra card. That's fine. Uh, they are taking a lot of life, so even though we're going to go infinite with uh, infinite servos, um, <laughs> it doesn't make that much of a difference, because our opponent's just dead to what we have on the battlefield at the moment. We're definitely snap blocking this Death Shadow, that's for sure. If they have Team of Battle Rage, we're just 100% dead, but... I wouldn't count on it. Yeah, Penner draws a card. Dead next turn. You have 11 power on the board. Too strong. Too strong. Alright, well that definitely helped. I think that that definitely won that game. Join that as a... Cool. Alright, well that's what we wanted to see. What a nice uh, ending. <laughs> <coughs> Two more matches to go. Let's see if we can bring it home. Uh, I think Pithing Needle on the thing is just too cute. Uh, don't want to go too deep on that line. Uh, Stubborn Denial seems fine. I think our opponent's probably going to try and jank us out that way. Uh, and then Dismembers as well. And then, yeah, take out the Ancient Stirrings. Really want the Welding Jars, I think, still. And, yeah, go like that. Definitely got to be careful with, uh, how you sideboard if you do want to bring in Stubborn Denials, because, as you saw, we just, like, kind of feel pretty obliged to... Take out the um, take out the ancient stirrings when we can because we don't want it to be whiffs, which would be of course very unfortunate. Uh, we'll keep this hand. Very middling, but do what we can. Mishra's ball for our opponent. Cracks it. And kept the no lander, huh? Oh yeah, fair enough. We've all been guilty of it, but. Oh, must be nice. All right. Well, now we're, now we're on basically full force. So pass the turn. Harden scales. Feels good. Feels good. We can play two two drops. Probably playing the walking blister. I think. Uh, I guess we'll play the hanging back walker. We'll see where our opponent plays. Uh, definitely a good idea to play the hanging back walker if our opponent just runs out a hex parasite like this. We just kill it with uh, walking blister. Stop our opponent from milling through their entire, uh, nearly, nearly, nearly hurting themselves. So we'll go Welding Jar. And Botanical Sanctum. And, yeah, I think we're playing out this Walking Blister here. Just for two. Uh, give me that Hardened Scales. Yeah, boy. Alright, so we're going to take this out, only because... It seemed to be pretty important to them game one, so I want to make sure that that doesn't happen again. And play the worker. Pass the turn. Opponent kept a one lander as well, so might be pretty soft, but it doesn't mean that their hand is full of action. It was like close enough to keep on one land, and now they have two, so should be good. Should be good. Probably keep this walking ballista alive if we can with the welding jar. Um, if our opponent has a path, that obviously goes to waste. Tide Hollow Sculler. Uh, that's fine. 
Yeah, so opponent gets to look at our hand, gets to take one of our two things, and then we'll probably end up just killing it. Um, but we'll see. The Metallic Mimic is obviously pretty good, so we'll play that. Easy peasy. Name Construct with this one. For sure. And then we'll play this for zero. And... Um, get him with this one. And I guess get him with this one. Actually, if our opponent blocks, we're just going to weld. Um, weld the walking blister back to life and then ping the tide holy scholar. Just for the bad beats, you know. Alright. Opponent's thinking through their options. Yeah, having Metallic Mimic and Hidden Scales feels so strong. Yeah, opponent, not going to take the bait, goes to 11, and we pass. Opponent. Definitely an interesting list. Silent Clearing for our opponent. Yeah, these new Horizon Canopy lands have definitely given a lot more power to already pretty powerful decks. It's pretty funny, actually. I don't see a whole lot of Grixis Death Shadow, but I feel like I've seen a lot of Mardu lately. Or at least, uh, red, like, red-black. Just nice to have those, uh, those draw cards, you know. Right, path to Exile. Um, yeah, I don't really have an option here. So we will... Uh, ping our opponent. Yeah, not much we're going to double about that one. We'll... happy to whiff it. That one damage. I mean, we could have drawn a land off the top. Would have been. I'm sorry. Would have pulled the land out of our deck, which would have been fine. But the opponent's pretty close to dead, honestly. We start taking up this hangerback walker at, at ludicrous uh, sizes, and if they don't have the another path, then we get pretty good. Yeah, opponent passes. We draw. Some opponent doesn't want us to have it. Yeah, it's a citadel. Okay. And I think we pass. We could get in with the worker. They block it. Yeah, it's probably just not worth it. All right, pass turn. We'll tick up our hangerback walker. Just make it ludicrously large. Yeah, I love hangerback walker. It was such a fun card. Still is. All right, opponent. Playing, getting pretty low in their life because of all these silent clearings, but I guess it's working out for them. Ranger Captain of Eos, probably to find another Death Shadow. But realistically, if we manage to kill our Hangerback Walker, um, yeah, there's a Death Shadow. And that's a big board, but it doesn't do that much against us. Alright, passes the turn. So we will tick up Hangerback Walker. Hunter. See if we can make our Hangerback Walker bigger than their, uh, bigger than their thingy. Uh, we'll name Servo with this one, just in case. We can name Human. We can name Artificer as well. Very exciting. And yeah, I think we're still at the passing point. Not really doing anything, just holding up our mana, holding up our Welding Jaws. We can start pretty profitably blocking with this Hangerback Walker. Opponents got to really consider what they want to do. It was actually probably a good idea to put Metallic Mimic on Thopter. So if we do end up cashing in the Hangerback Walker, we end up making a bunch of 2-2s. Two and that's going to be really hard for our opponent to deal with. At the moment, uh, though, we could have six uh, Thopters. But I think we'll probably just cash in the Welding Jar if our opponent, if we, if our opponent just starts to get frisky. I probably can get in, it's just like doesn't feel very good, you know? Also Path to Exile obviously gets us, we need a sack outlet sometime soon. Alright. Opponent, thinking through their options. And... Does nothing so far. We'll see what they come up with. We have a lot of live top decks, also this Welding does usually pretty strong. Um, this stops our, us from playing non-creature spells, that's fine.
Alright. Opponent deep in the tank. Alright. Opponent? Shenanigans. There's not much we can do about that. Kills the one on Construct, which is fine. They can replace their draw every turn with a dredge, but... It's not going to kill all these Thopters, you know? And they just kept getting bigger. Alright, we'll take this redraw here. So... Go for the redraw. Stubborn Denial. That's pretty cute. With our 6 6 Hangerback Walker. Still not attacking, unfortunately, but it's nice to have the Stubborn Denial, that's for sure. Yeah, we'll pass. If our opponent dredges back shenanigans and tries to cast it, we might actually just <laughs> Stubborn Denial it. <laughs> if they put it on Hangerback, then it's kind of in big trouble, you know? Alright, fair enough. Opponents just making their death shadows big. We're still on 20 life though, so you gotta kinda be careful with that. And... No dredge. Alright. Fair enough. Well, we still have the stubborn denial, and it's turned on at the moment, so seeing the power of uh, the blue splash, you know. Thought sees. Well, they can take it. Make them lose some life. Goes to three, which is not a low, not a high life total, that's for sure. The Death Shadows are large and in charge, but we are larger and in charger. So here we will block and block and block. How do we get blown out here? Um. Team of Battle Rage. Huh. That doesn't kill us, right? Oh my god, that kills us! Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Well. Yeah, I mean, we'll see if we're dead. I think we're dead here, which is pretty awkward. Opponent can go to one. Yeah, this is, this is bad. Yeah, put a counter on it. Battle Rage. And. Yeah, it looks, looks pretty lethal, actually. 22, 1. Ugh. Fair enough. That's the big lethal. Okay, okay. Well, that was pretty impressive. Uh, double... Do the big blocks on the, um... On the big creatures. That's for sure. Sideboards... Uh... I wonder if her nature's claiming here. Probably not. Yeah, I think our opponent's parent removal is sort of based on other things, so... Alright, keep an eye out for Team Battle Rage. Good option. Summon and I would have been good, obviously, but... Do what you gotta do, you know? <laughs> the Trap Hand. Uh, yeah, we'll keep the Trap Hand. Gladly. Keep it, hopefully lose to our own Hubris, which I think is really important. Um, but we do have Dismember if our opponent plays something, I guess. I don't know exactly what they play on turn one that we care about that much, but... Worth a shot. Alright. So, Citadel. And Mox Opal. And... Module. And... Pass. It's still pretty fast, like, turning on Metallic Mimic, like, maybe getting to Urza. Like, we kind of have the combo in hand, so it would be a perfect way to finish the match. Inquisition of Pose like. Alright, well, we'll probably take out Metallic Mimic here. I would assume. But any top deck, uh. Any top deck creature makes, um, animation module on. So, Relic, not the best draw, but. I guess not a dead draw. Probably gonna crack it though, honestly. Um. Alright, pass turn. Crack it in our opponent's end step. I don't, like, they have unearths and stuff, but... Not really a huge issue. Tired Hello Scholar. Alright, well... Get him! Haha, <laughs> fool. And... Yeah, we'll let this resolve, and then, yeah, we're gonna dismember it for sure.
Just get a dead. Like, Paris could probably take something anyway, so. Oh man, is that how that works? Ooh. Alright, learn something new. Ah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> Alright, exile forever. Good news, good news. Um, so, love to learn, love to learn. Uh, yeah. That's bad. That's really bad. I would have taken the removal spell, but like... Ugh. Who templates cards like that? This is a travesty. Alright, pass turn. Oh well, big punt, big punt. Only a few punts this league, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Yeah, it works more like World Gorge Dragon and less like Oblivion Ring. But, here we are. Still have a Hangerback Walker, still making servos. Then it's just cycling. Just sifting through their deck looking for someone good to play. Can't relate. All my draws are gas. Alright. Play a Ravager. And... We'll definitely pay. At some point I think we probably have to leave mana for the... Relic? But... I think for now it's fine. Alright, get in. Yep. Actual land wouldn't go astray here, that's for sure. Opponent cracks. Gets a tapped land, I'm sure. Sacred Foundry, untapped. Ooh, I'm ready to party, huh? Never mind. Alright. Well, we have Sacrifice Protection, so should be okay. Opponent goes for the Path to Exile. Um... Yeah, that's fine. We'll gladly get a land, I think. Get a land. We can trigger animation module once at least. Hit something. Alright. I guess we have no response, so we'll just skip through this turn. Yeah, Penny draws a card. Seems to be some consistency issues with this build, particularly, but apparently our opponent's good at magic, so. Could be wrong. Alright, Ard Mesa for our opponent. Replaces their silent clearing. And passes. Alright. So, not doing anything with the Saint Moth. That's unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, I guess we make a servo. Uh, yeah. Do that. Alright, get a land. And if we don't draw anything good, then we'll, um... It's just very unlikely that we won't draw a 2-drop. Alright, fair enough. Fair enough! Alright, get in. See, I had the, uh, the insight to... Pay 2 mana to make a servo. <laughs> Fast the turn. Getting ready to crack this relic at some point. Opponent fetches their Arid Mesa for a Godless Shrine, tapped. Conserving their life total a little bit more than game one, <laughs> where they played Hex Parasite and activated it a million times. <laughs> Alright, Silent Clearing for our opponent. Draws a card, looking for something. They're not just dead, but. Yeah, it would be nice to have an Urza right now, I'm not gonna lie. Alright, Tide Hello on blocking duty. That's fine. Well, we can overpower our opponent with servos, that's for sure, but we will crack this. Draw a card. Water Logged Grove. I, I, really, I am really liking these uh, lands being something that aren't lands, you know? So, crack this with this Mox Opal in case we want to replay the fresh Mox Opal, I guess. Oh, that works. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lucky we had the Mox Opal. Alright. Uh, let's see what we can do here. So, play Mox Opal. Keep the new one. Can't really do anything fancy with Urza, but we do have him, which is important. So, play Urza. Make a construct. And we're attacking. Is there any point in attacking? No, I guess not. I guess we're actually just flipping the Urza wheel. That seems reasonable. So one, two, 
Uh, three. Four. Don't want to go too overboard with the tapping in case we need a block, but probably fine. Alright. Spin the Urza wheel. Yes! A land that we can't cast. Alright. Get it out of our deck. It's exactly where we want it to be. Out of our deck. <laughs> and we made a 7 7 construct, you know, that's no small feat. Alright, silent clearing for our opponent. Are they going to crack it for the card draw? Plays a Death Shadow. Alright. Not too threatening, but, um, you know, Team of Battle Rage can definitely change that, as we saw. Alright, draws a card. Plays a Bauble. Cycle through the deck. Cracks a Bauble. Looks at our top card. Oh, uh, we might go for something, depending on what happens, I guess. Opponent's only a 9, they got a chump block with the Tide Hollow Scholar. And yeah, they get a couple of redraws, probably, I don't know. It's hard to go all in when your opponent's playing so much removal, you know? We will spin the Urza Wheel though, that's for sure. I don't think we're using Ink Moth this turn. Alright, spin the Urza Wheel. We hit a land. Oh, that's not very good. Um, so, I guess we attack with the 7-7. Seven, seven. Get in there. Are we dead to our opponent playing a bunch of spells, losing a bunch of life? Yeah, I think we'll keep a bunch of servos back. And we get back your card. Yeah, it's tempting. One, two, three, four, five. We leave one servo untapped. Yeah, whatever. Play one more thing. Why not? If we died a team of battle rage, then I guess our opponent got us. Ha! <laughs> Tap out Mox over for blue. Thank you, Ezra. Alright. Uh, we'll cast that. Oh, now we go infinite. Hooray! So, it is a bit risky, obviously, with a bunch of zero cost stuff in our deck. Um, but, we do have infinite servos. So, that's good. So, they're dead next turn to infinite servos, which is pretty dace. But if they kill us, then that's a different story. Opponent, no attacks. Alright, well, unfortunately our opponent is dead in that case. So we will... Oh no, we can't get the first counter. Yeah, that's awkward. We need something to get the first counter before we can go off. Fair enough. Alright, untap. <gasps> a little bit of a Rubik's Cube that we have to solve ourselves, you know? But is our opponent dead to just our board at the moment? There's a lot of cards on here. They can block the 8-8, eight, eight. they take 5, 6. Culligan's Command, destroy target artifact. That's unfortunate. Tap this. Uh. Target player discards a card. Our opponent's timing is less than ideal. Alright, fair enough. Well, we get the win. Uh, um, we did get there. Our opponent didn't do anything in their draw step, which is a little bit awkward. But we saw a little bit of power from Urza, and we got, um, we got some play points for our troubles, which is very good. So... Uh, I guess we'll see what's in this chest. Why not? Why not? Why not? And we got to win with Urza, which is very exciting. So, um, let's open this chest. What do we get? Some good, I hope. Love to open chests. They're worth less than they have been in a while, but, you know, it's fine. Dead Man's Chest and Molten Sentry. Fantastic. Alright, well, let's go to the wrap-up. So that was Harden Scales uh, Urza, or Urza Scales Affinity, or Harden Affinity Scales. <laughs> Whichever way you want to say it. Uh, I think it was a lot of fun to play. I think there's definitely nice to have a I win button um, in the sort of you accumulate the combo from cards you already play, like Metallic Mimic and Animation Module. And we ended up kind of stomping our opponent with, uh, with not only the combo, but just like Harden Scales is a good deck. I'm um, not sure if this is going to break anything. I think we definitely miss out on uh, not being... Uh, so, like, Grixis Urza is so strong right now because they... Um, 
Uh, Grixis are so strong right now because they can tutor out their pieces to go infinite. We're just kind of like hoping to lock into them. I mean, we're playing four metallic mimics and four animation, uh, three animation modules and four Arcman Ravagers, so kind of got the redundancy line, but that's where, where you kind of want to go back up and say, well, if we win with Urza, then woo, lucky us, but um, we're not like going all in trying to get there because we're also just, we also just won a lot of matches because, in a lot of games, because Harden Scales is a good deck. <laughs> A couple of misplays along the way, but I think uh, we had a really good time. So let me know in the comments below how you liked it and uh, what you would change. And uh, maybe we'll come back to this again in the future. Uh, my name is Angus Mackay, and this has been CBR Plays. Um, just some good old-fashioned gameplay. So if you like it, please feel free to comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And uh, we will see you next time.